Okay, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists, this is Patrick Penry, and this is a short presentation on uh, NRC and their ability to go onto social media, to go on the internet, and to use their bloggers and their trolls and their shills and the nuclear apologists to beat down any information that casts a negative light on them. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. Even truthful information, they have to come in and do damage control. Again, if you look at the solar power industry, what I'm about to show you right now is simply not a factor. But when you go into the nuclear power industry, they have to have constant damage control. Otherwise, if people really find out the true dangers of nuclear power, it, they wouldn't last at all. So they have to constantly be doing damage mitigation, suppression, and having their bloggers and their trolls and their shills come in and attack what we do. And furthermore, they are using our tax dollars to do this. They're, they're using our tax dollars in an attempt to withhold pertinent information which actually is relevant to our health and our safety as human beings, right? With this information that most Americans don't know but need to know, they're literally getting cancer and getting sick from uh, low levels of ionizing radiation, fallout, the radioactive plume that they covered up, all this kind of uh, stuff. We are suffering from the fact that this information is being withheld and we are in fact paying for it to be withheld from us, okay? let's. Let's dig right in and we're going to go back to the Elliot Brenner uh, memo of March 13, which some of you may be familiar with. I just want to concentrate on a couple sections here in this memo where he, he says to them, remember this is the 13th, this is just right after the catastrophe. Uh, Elliot Brenner says, the blog was a great way to get information out besides our standard press releases. And NSIR released access to YouTube and Twitter by midday Sunday so we could do more monitoring of what information was quote unquote in the public domain. Please take the time Monday morning to review all the press releases that went out and the blog post as well. Please use these to guide any media responses you provide. While we know more than what these say, we're sticking to this story for now. Now, if we look at this clearly, what, what, he's, what he's saying here is we're monitoring YouTube, we're monitoring Twitter, we have our bloggers go out and give our version of what we say things are, and we have our press releases, again, one-way form of communication, you just read it and go on your way, you can't respond or debate or anything, so it's a one-way avenue of information, they select what information they're going to send in our direction, I'll put it that way, and it says clearly they're going to do monitoring of what information is in the public domain. Domain. Again, solar power, do they have to do this? No. Wind power, do they have to do this? I sincerely doubt it. And that particular screen capture is important. I just want you to show they have bloggers. Uh, those bloggers have a purpose, and it is to suppress any information that shows cast the nuclear industry in a negative light. So it's that really that simple. Okay, this next screen capture is from March 28, and it's in relation to a leaked plume map from the NRC. And as I continue to read these things, I get more out of it. At the bottom of this particular uh, memo, he says, let's see, where does he say? We were able to spot yet another use of this thing and notify you. This thing, they're talking about a NRC logo in a plume map that the Sovereign Independent, an online website, has somehow managed to get a hold of and posted it. Now, someone's found this. Like I say, they search social media. Someone finds a plume map, and they send up the chain of command for cybersecurity. Charles Watkins II heads up cybersecurity, and then he will attend to it, okay? And so let me just read you this particular thing here and what's important about it. It says, we succeeded in having this bit of bogosity, and that's referring to the leaked a plume map with the NRC logo on it. We had this bit of bogosity removed from several websites. Several websites now. It was more than one that had this thing up on the internet. In the early days of the crisis when we spotted it, got word out via social media, blogged about it, and otherwise knocked it down. Okay, this is super critical here because this proves they're actively searching social media and they have their agents of deception to go out and counter what we find out about them, right? And that's why information is so difficult to come by in Fuku. It's at a premium. 
truthful information. And in fact, 95% of the American public is by and large completely clueless about what's going on. The plume in the Pacific, the radiation now detected in the Pacific, the radioactive plume that they covered up that we got hit with, the fallout, they simply do not know. Why do they not know? Because if they go online, they're simply not going to be subjected to a real debate and real argument or real information. They have the upper hand that they're taking our tax money to send their trolls and shills out to do this damage control. Is it wrong? Yes. Is it morally unethical? Yes. Is it criminal? Well, it probably should be if it's not. Again, I'd make trolling a felony if it were me. You're charged with felony trolling Dallas Goldbug and you're going to have to do hard time for that, right? That just makes sense to me. So keep in mind, clearly here, uh, we got word out via social media. That would be Facebook. That would be all those characters on Facebook with no picture and no background and you can't determine who they are, but you have a whole lot of them as your friends. And they say that we're not getting hit by radiation and plutonium's too heavy to float over here when they know darn well it's an aerosolized form. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. They're in Facebook. Their trolls are on YouTube. I told you guys that while wow, 95% of these YouTube channels that claim to be news channels and trying to crank out some information, they won't talk about this. They will not cover it. They're totally controlled. I know it's staggering to think that many are controlled opposition, but it's not that expensive to crank up a bunch of bogus YouTube sites. It's not that expensive to have a bunch of trolls go on a Facebook and show you some picture of you know, Ron Paul or Superman or Super Truth or something like that. You don't know who they are, and they, they simply, one tactic is you just don't talk about it. They'll post anything else up but nuclear the nuclear crisis situation you must understand they are saturating media with their version of the story and they're saturating media with the subject that they want to talk about a superficial one usually but they never want to talk about the real problem always some superficial issue and they're able to do that by going online with all these trolls and shills and apologists and their agents and to do this bit of damage control and damage mitigation via social media via their blogs and they knock it down and this is this is not just one screen capture if you go back to the uh, Brenner memo he says clearly you know this is how effective this is we're able to monitor the information and we're able to address it with our blog posts as well so that's how they do damage control it doesn't matter if the information is true or false they don't want anything to show nuclear power in a negative light and let me just say this by and large what the anti-nuclear uh, people are doing and exposing is generally dead on the money. It's generally dead on the money. They just don't want you to know that people are dying of cancer since the 70s because all these nuke plants have effluents and they leak and it's they say it's emission free and clean but it's certainly not when the NRC admits they all have discharges every year and miraculously those discharges are always below the super low threshold right and I show you in the documents where they fudge the numbers and they're cheating on the measurements and they redact and hide measurements from us so you know you can't believe them on that stuff folks okay this next screen capture is an actual contract from Mar Incorporated. I'm going to tell you what they do in just a second, but let's let's look at the numbers here and let's let's realize a lot of our tax money is going into damage control online for the NRC. I mean, if it was solar power, you wouldn't have to do that. Okay, let's be very clear. There's other means of producing electricity that don't have to go to these means to hide the fact that their production means are so uh, dangerous and deadly to the American public. Okay, and this shows that Mar Incorporated out of Rockville, Maryland, these are the ones, people that have the contract. What are they doing? Well, any kind of cybersecurity, any type of online damage mitigation, searching for who's talking about NRC online or the plume or Fukushima or whatever have you, that's what they do. The next screen capture I've gone in and showed you, here's, let's look at the money that we're paying these guys. Cumulative total of NRC obligations, 1.9 million. Okay, and that's just 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's just through uh, five years. If you look at this particular screen capture, I go in and break it down and I say, notice the increase between fiscal year 2011 and fiscal year 2012. After the Fukushima disaster, the amount spent more than doubles. And, and, and that's logical, right? That would, that would make sense. After the disaster, people's talking about it. They want to know what's going on. You can clearly see in the FOIA documents, they're all the time talking about you know, private citizens asking questions, professionals asking questions, academia, and just anyone who's inquiring about this thing, they want to know about it. They want to know about it. And who tells them who's asking questions and who's writing about them? Mar Incorporated. These guys go in and send them the information and say, here's a list of articles written about you. Now you can go do damage control. 
I show the total obligation over five years, over $1.9 million. Again, if nuclear power was so innocuous and so harmless, you would not have to do this. That's just a fact. You wouldn't have to do it. I challenge anyone to show me where solar power is spending this kind of money and doing this kind of damage control over their industry. Seriously. This is just one contract for one IT company. There is at least one other IT company under the direction of the NRC, and I've got their contracts, and I've got their what they're paying them as well. In fact, I've read an article that's, uh, what's it called, NRC, uh, it's called Search and Seek and Destroy, uh, NRC um, Searches Social Media, something like that. If you go to my website, you can type in Seek and Destroy. I have an article on the, on this already, but I, I don't have all these screen captures, but I do have a lot of good screen captures in there that pre pretty much show you the whole story. You won't be left asking any questions by the time you're done. Uh, with that particular article and I ask you to look at it and share it around I'll put a link to it on this video and help you out there okay the next screen capture I went to Mar Incorporated online and just did a screen grab of their front page cybersecurity and information assurance okay that's what they do information assurance interestingly enough with Mar Incorporated if you look at my next screen capture well they have the single Illuminati eye as their logo which is quite disturbing for me because you see a pattern if you're into this kind of stuff of these symbols they use well like I say it's a pattern and once you know what to recognize you can look symbolically and kind of have an idea what an, a company or an organization is into because I don't use these symbols I avoid them purposefully because I know what they represent right and even an amateur a researcher into the field of these conspiracies or conspiracy theorists they run across this early on early on and they know what to look for so I thought that was disturbing they have a pentagon up in their star and then they also have the Illuminati eye and if you really want to get into it on the a that middle M a R the a in the middle you see a wave there I'm understanding now that's that's a Saturn symbol of Saturn and those rings of Saturn and if you really want to get into that kind of stuff it's probably neither here nor there as far as the uh, trolling and what they do online to suppress truthful information that casts a negative light on NRC but I like to throw that in there because you guys will see a pattern in these companies and corporations they're all using the same symbols and I tell you they're all part of the conspiracy when I say mass arrest on an unprecedented scale that goes into industry the captains of industry the CEOs and a, to a certain way down we're gonna have to turn and put those guys in jail they're all part of this conspiracy what I'm talking about right now is they're hiding information from the American public it is actually if the public knew this information it would save lives and that is criminal that is criminal just a couple screen captures left and we're gonna be done here what we're looking at now I just recently this was a document sent to me yesterday and I got the screen cap out of there and what I want to show you here is whilst on the one hand NRC is searching social media Facebook YouTube blogs they want to know who's putting up truthful information that casts them in a negative light okay on the other hand the information that's pertinent coming out of Fukushima that the United States the states our 50 states need to know that is being withheld and not just from the states China's withheld certain uh, particular um, a situation report and other countries are denied plume models and situation report let's have a look at this particular one here and let me read it to you uh, it says request to share RST reactor safety team document with foreign governments okay there's been a request to share this particular document with foreign uh, governments this one is quote unquote the stability document and I gather what that means is stability document is what it's going to take to stabilize Fukushima and I think this is into late March or early April so a lot of times elapsed and it's still not stable I mean they'll they'll lie to you and tell you that it's stable but it's very dynamic there's no real cooling going on to speak of and they don't want anyone to know that and in the stability document it kind of gives the measures that are going to have to be taken to stabilize the situation now they don't at this late date weeks have elapsed they don't want this leaking out and people to know that this many weeks have elapsed and the situation still is not under control it's very dynamic there's still a, a lot of uh, effluence a lot of releases radioactive releases they're trying to downplay trying to hide that and they don't want that information to get out it says quote request to share RST document with foreign governments the governments of Canada the UK and Finland have requested that the RST share their quote-unquote stability document which they have discussed during their daily call with these governments 
The request was forwarded to the ET, who is assessing what information is contained in the document before deciding on whether or not to share the document. I remind you when they discuss this on a daily call, they have what's called their nuclear hands-off notes. I've got a screen capture of this where the guy talks about his hands-off notes. That Those are subjects that are taboo, that they are not allowed to speak about. They know they're being recorded. The hands-off notes, that's what they absolutely don't want us to know about. So when they have a discussion, a daily call, they're being monitored. They have a liaison there, and they're very careful what they do and do not say to these other governments. So, yes, it's they discussed it during their daily call, but I would warn you that that's a very limited, and, and indeed, I've got plenty of screen captures where they you know, they say, we're not going to go into detail and we can't talk about this. Yeah, so they're, they're going to be very careful what they do discuss them. The, the really pertinent damaging information stability report will never be seen by these governments or by the states or by China because it is so incredibly damaging as to the actual severity, the nature of the accident, okay? They want you to think it's 10% of Chernobyl, but it's not. It's probably a thousand times Chernobyl or a whole lot more than that. So the request was forwarded to the ET, that would be the request to share this document, who is assessing what information is contained in the document before deciding on whether or not to share the document. The document is still in draft, awaiting interagency comments. PMT was given permission to read the draft document to conference call members. Release of this document will be addressed as part of the process being developed to address the release of a document to the New York Times. And we'll talk about that in just a second, the release to the New York Times, which they, they didn't want that to happen. Action. Continue to follow. Update. A copy of the RST stability document was released to Mark, Mark Schaefer, that's of the IAEA, and he was instructed not to release it to any other organization that it was for his use only. Okay, this is the stability document, and what this shows is just what steps and measures will have to be taken to stabilize the situation. They don't want people to know that because it's no quick fix, and when you, if you really look in these documents and really dig in, you'll find, you'll be shocked. You will be appalled, and you'll be calling your congressman, and you'll want to get rid of nuclear power, and us go to solar and release the thousands of suppressed patents that the patent office is has seized upon and is suppressing. Okay, clearly in this screen capture, though, we see that there's a document with pertinent information, information that would actually literally save the lives of the American public. Because had this information gotten out, maybe someone would have called for potassium iodine for rainwater warnings, green leafy vegetable warnings. They did not. They did not do that. Okay, next screen capture, I believe this is the last. And again, we're talking about Mark Schaefer. The IAEA has requested permission to share the NRC SITREP. Now, this is a situation report, not the stability document. This, in, in my understanding, is another document. This was one that Hillary Clinton was privy to early on. She knew what was contained in the SITREP, which we don't get to know. Let me continue reading. Mark Schaefer has requested permission to share the NRC SITREP with the Chinese government. OIP is working. OIP was advised this document should not be shared. Concerns with any plan to share the SITREP with the Chinese government are, one, U.S. states have been denied access to this document, and two, if we share the document with the Chinese government, this precedent could obligate us to honor requests from other international stakeholders as well. As we learned with the New York Times article, we need to safeguard against leaks of official use only information. And folks, what I find is that official use only information in these documents, 99% of the time, it's damaging, incriminating evidence of what they've done. Crimes they've committed, measurements that were really high, the true nature of nuclear power and everything that comes with it. That's what's being hidden there. If you look at the overall broad context of these Mark I reactors and the fact that that's the one that was involved in Fukushima, I tell people it's like that outdated um, Chevrolet Corvair that was so dangerous, nobody wanted it. It's like that Bronco that rolls over and killed so many people, nobody really wants that. Okay, it's like the Ford Pinto that the gas tank, if you hit it in the back, it'll explode and burn everybody up in the car. Nobody wants that design. So when you look at these heavy redactions, and the document I looked at last night, wow, holy shnikes, they don't even use black ink anymore. It's a black box, and it's all white inside. There's just nothing there. The redaction is incredibly heavy, and, and it's quite obvious it's when measurements or when any kind of damaging information is coming up about Navy ships and radiation and sailors and so on. It's all heavily redacted. There's no uh, military secrets being revealed. 
There are no trade secrets being revealed. Again, nobody wants the Mark I. It's very dangerous. Look what happened in Fukushima. Hey, come on. Nobody wants it. There's almost no excuse in these documents for there to be any redaction. And I, and I cover this in my subversion of FOIA. And I'm going to do a video on this of, as well, a much more focused video than my broadcast the other day. And so please look for that as well. Okay, that's going to sum this up. I hope you certainly understand in a broad context, nuclear power is extremely dangerous. The reality of it has to be hidden from the American public. From that first herd of sleepwalking sheeple, you cannot let them know. The Housewives of America. When Alex Jones went on The View, that was his chance, folks. And it had been enough time elapsed. I sent him all the information. They wouldn't let me on his show. He could have gone in and really brought attention to nuclear power on The View. I wouldn't even talked about 9-11 myself. I would have spilled my guts about nuclear power and left it there with the Housewives of America. But you have to understand, controlled opposition is full court, full spectrum. It's in the mainstream. It's in the alternative. It's in the independent. And here's proof right here, folks, how much money they spend. This was just one account I show you, over $1.9 over 1.9 million, and that, the amount doubled after Fukushima, proving that then they really got to go in with all their trolls and shills and apologists, hitting the blogs, hitting the Facebook, hitting the YouTube, and doing what trolls do. Right? Okay, folks, this is Patrick Penny. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, we need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.